beautiful Sarah Pascoe. <laughs> <laughs> Chubby face, terrible hair, scared of other people's opinions. But that's enough about Tom Ballard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to talk about Kim Jong Un. <laughs> Kim Jong Un claims to have learned to drive when he was three. He says he invented the hamburger. In 2012, he claimed he had discovered a unicorn's lair. In his official biography, it says that he can control the weather and has never done a shit. And of course, that is unlikely, but none more so than the fact that Tom Ballard can get on television. <laughs> North Korea is a perfect example of what happens when you deny people the right to an opinion. In the totalitarian dictatorship, children as young as two are subject to brainwashing. And I think that it's disgusting that I had to explain what both of those words mean to the other team. Because <laughs> they're stupid. <laughs> and they smell. Yeah. <laughs> Kim Jong-un's eldest brother, Kim Jong-nam, had been supposed to succeed their father, Kim Jong-il, when he died. But he was caught in 2001 trying to flee North Korea with a fake passport in order to get into Disneyland. <laughs> Such desperate need to escape a harsh and joyless state in order to be entertained will be understood by anyone who pretended they needed the toilet to get out of a Tom Ballard show. <laughs> it's very funny, it's all right. <laughs> Clothing made from denim has been banned by Kim Jong-un, which means that North Korea's gene pool is even smaller than the Ballard family's. <laughs> Tom, that isn't based on anything that you've said here today. I'm just assuming that you're inbred from what you look like. <laughs> and, and, and I do know that your mother's here today, and I'm sorry that she's also your brother. <laughs> Did you two use to date? What is going on? <laughs> There's a lot of sexual tension here. I am trying to be respectful. Um, I'm, try I'm trying. I Trying. In 2013, Kim Jong-un condemned a comedian who had offended him to work for the rest of his life, hard labor, in a coal mine. His name was Lee Chun Hong, and he will never see his family again, he will never see daylight, <laughs> and he will never have to sit through Tom Ballard's <laughs> gala routine. Come see, come sir. <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Sarah, why are you saying all these terrible things? <laughs> Expressing your opinion, I think you should shut Every the fuck time, up. every time, <laughs> every time I say your name, you're getting slightly more successful. <laughs> it doesn't make up for it. Look, I think I just want to make up a little celebrity. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'll change a couple of other ones to this one's name. What are you again? <laughs> Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am, claimed Descartes. Take away a person's entitlement to opinions, and you obstruct their right to thought. Without thought, there is no consciousness. We are no longer technically human. <laughs> Such a condition is tragic and upsetting. And if you don't believe me, just watch the sad souls trapped in a comatose vegetative state, leaving the room, after the show of Adam <laughs> Raspberry Bush. <laughs> when people have opinions, they might well be ill-informed and idiotic. Women should be punished if they have abortions. Climate change isn't real. All Muslims are terrorists. And other things Tom Ballard said backstage. <laughs> <laughs> I make no apologies. <laughs> Sorry, can we get the photo of Ronnie Chang off the screen, please? Let's get around <laughs> But there are examples.
examples of outliers, individuals who spoke out and created positive social change. Rosa Parks sitting at the front of the bus. George Orwell, who reported on Stalin. Malali Yousafzai defying the Taliban. The opposing team would silence those brave heroes in the same way they silenced their audiences. <laughs> Australia needs the opinions of every single individual now more than ever as you work towards equal marriage for all of your citizens, as you discuss as a society how to rectify the evils committed upon the indigenous of this land, and as you work out what to do with the poor, unsettled people imprisoned, terrified behind that table. <laughs> <laughs> to be serious for a moment, I just want to talk very briefly now about when God spoke to me. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't just me, it was everyone in the supermarket. <laughs> he, he came on over the tannoy and he said, Hello, <laughs> this is God. And most people just carried on shopping. But one old man, he shouted back, he said, Oh, what's on offer? <laughs> And God said, eternal salvation? And the man said, what about shampoo? Anything on shampoo? <laughs> God's like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, like a two for one. And God's like, I'm a three for one. It's me, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus. <laughs> but then everyone was like, three for one on Jesus. And they started running towards the dairy of. Pushing each other out of the way, scrabbling, fighting. God is now furious. Like, stop it, everyone. You're disrespecting me. Put the baby bells down. I'm going to punish you all. I'm going to destroy planet Earth. And I said, oh, I think it's a bit late. We've basically already done that. And then God cried, which was the saddest sound it was. And I said, God, is there anything I can do to stop you crying? And he said, yes. You could win at the great debate. <laughs> Because if Tom Ballard is victorious, it'll be like the baby Jesus died for nothing. <laughs> Kill that baby! And I told him, I told him I'll do my best, but it's not up to me, it's up to the handsome, intelligent audience who were there on the day. So my people, vote for freedom of speech, vote for democracy, don't vote for Kim Jong Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.